So uh, we've done a little work with models and we're going to be actually uh, doing quite a bit more this week because we are going to be using models uh, to generate database and database tables uh, using Entity Framework. And specifically, uh, what we're going to be doing is called Code First. So we do our code for our classes, take those classes, and generate our database and tables. Uh, what we know about models so far is that the model has our business logic, they include a namespace and class along with properties, which become uh, the columns in our tables. They are strongly typed because we have data types. Uh, they're used in Entity Framework Code First to generate the tables. Uh, we can pull a model's namespace into a controller and create objects. We can also pull a model's namespace into a view. To create a model, we basically just right click on the model folder, go to add in class, and give it a name. Uh, then uh, some code is generated and all we really have to do is add the properties. And if we want a default value, we just set the property equal to the default value. And what Entity Framework does is it basically makes uh, interfacing with the database easier and less error prone. It is uh, open source object relational mapping. Uh, it's a framework that's used in .NET applications. And it was developed to make uh, working with a database much easier. It allows you to work at a higher level of abstraction when you deal with data. And this little graphic kind of shows you how Entity Framework kind of fits into your application. So you've got your user interface, which is your views. You have the business layer, uh, which gets into your models. And then you've got uh, the database down here and what interfaces between your models and the database is a data layer or a data access layer, uh, which involves using Entity Framework. So a couple of different ways that you can use Entity Framework is you can do code first, which is what we're gonna do today where you basically write the code for the model and Entity Framework generates the database and tables. Uh, you can also use uh, something called an EF Designer where the tables are created first. Um, and next week we are gonna get into database first. And when you pull in an existing database, this diagram is automatically created. And then from there, you generate the models. So there's two different workflows. You have code first and you have EF designer. In this class, what you are going to be learning is code first. And you're also gonna be learning database first. So you'll get a, a little feel for both. Okay, and this table just kind of outlines the differences between uh, code first and EF designer. So code first migrations uh, are something that we are going to be using once we're done testing our database uh, and we're ready to move it into production. So you'll have an initial database that works with our entity framework model. Uh, migrations will be used to track our changes and they also keep our database up to date. Uh, but until we are actually ready to go live, we do not 
do migrations. So that's something that we're going to do in upcoming weeks. The code first approach, which is what we're going to be using today, uh, basically you're going to focus on creating the classes and then once we have those correctly created, uh, when we run the application and we access a view that requires the classes, uh, that's when the database actually gets generated. So we've got our classes and eventually our database gets generated. So here are our steps that we are going to follow. We're going to create our app. Uh, we are going to kind of style our site, which is the home controller and the views. Then we're going to install uh, Entity Framework 6. We'll create our data models. Uh, and then uh, after the data models, we create something called a database context. Um, basically, that defines the tables in our database. Uh, and the tables are based on our models. And then uh, we will create a little initializer file that puts test data into our tables. And then in order to run it, uh, we have to set up Entity Framework to use a local database. Uh, finally, we will generate uh, controller and views for each class that we created in our data model. Once we've done all of that, then we are going to run the app and generate the database. Once the database is generated, we can actually view the database inside Visual Studio.